Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing 50 plus tips and tricks to fully customize your Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. And of course, the same tips and tricks also apply to the S21 Plus and the S21. Now you paid a lot of money for your phone, so I wanna make sure that you get maximum satisfaction from your purchase. And of course, if you're thinking about buying this phone, this is gonna be the perfect video to watch to get yourself acquainted with various features of this phone. So let's dive in and get started right away. All right, so the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna actually give your phone a unique name. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to your settings, you wanna go all the way down, okay, all the way down, go into about phone, and over here you can name your phone. So in my case, I can tap on edit here. Right now it says Saki, I'm gonna say 21U. So I know that this is the Saki 21 Ultra phone, and this is gonna also help you a lot when you try to connect this phone to other devices, you can easily recognize the phone by its name when you do a Bluetooth connection or a Wi-Fi connection. So fantastic tactic, let's move on. Now one more very important thing that you wanna set up right away on your phone is if you go to your settings and if you go to advanced features, uh, at the bottom here, you're gonna have an option, not the bottom, I'm sorry. In the middle, you have something that says motions and gestures. So you wanna tap on this one and there's a couple options you wanna enable. The biggest ones is double tap to turn on the screen and double tap to turn off the screen. So look, I can double tap anywhere on the screen to turn it off or double tap to wake it up. So make sure this thing is in fact enabled. You also have this option. So if I go back to that menu, I have the lift to wake feature. So look at this, I'm gonna double tap on the empty area on the screen to turn off the phone. But then what I can do is I can grab it, lift it up like this, and that's gonna turn on the phone so I can quickly glance at it. Okay, so that is the lift to wake feature that you can enable if you so desire under motions and gestures. Now one thing you wanna set up right away with your phone is gonna be, it is a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, so under display we have some new options. The biggest option is gonna be this thing right here. First, highly recommend that you keep your refresh rate, your motion smoothness at adaptive 120 hertz. With the standard rate, you're gonna save some battery life, but you are gonna get a little bit a little bit less smooth experience. With this one, you are gonna get the super smooth experience the way it was intended. And also you wanna go back here, and the big thing with the S21 Ultra is when you go into the screen resolution, you have option to select three resolutions, and the best part is you can have the highest resolution set up at the same time with the highest adaptive motion smoothness. This was not possible with the previous versions. But again, one thing you wanna look for here is when you do go to the screen resolution, at the bottom it does tell you when you have the sharpest visuals, you also get to use more battery, so it does reduce your battery life a little bit. And on top of that, if you go to full high definition plus, you will get good visuals and you're gonna get moderate battery usage. So if you wanna save some battery, you can keep this here, but if you just don't care, you want the maximum clarity, go for this one, okay? We're gonna keep it at that one for the duration of this video. And one more thing I'm gonna let you know right here is under display, we do have a new option that says Eye Comfort Shield. Now, this is gonna be great for people that like to read books or articles on their phone. When you enable this, it basically gives the phone a warmer tone so it's gonna be easy on the eyes. I would just keep this at adaptive, but you can also go for the custom mode and change the color temperature as you desire. As you can see, you can go from warm to cool based on your needs. I'm gonna turn it off for now for this video. And of course, another very important thing that's gonna affect the way you use your phone is the navigation bar that's at the bottom. You can see I have three buttons right now, but you can always go into navigation bar and you can go to swipe gestures. So I have my button gestures, tap this to go home, tap this to bring the recent apps, and tap this to go back, okay? Uh, but we can go to navigation bar, you can go to swipe gestures, and now what I have is I can swipe up to go home, swipe up again to bring up the recent options, and then if I wanna go back on a menu, I can just swipe from the corner, that takes you back one menu. So you can pick which navigation gestures you want to pick for your phone. You can even disable gesture hints, 
that makes this line at the bottom disappear. So basically with this option, you're getting a fully immersive option. Most people actually prefer it this way. So look at that. The phone just looks completely full screen with no buttons in the way, okay? I simply am used uh, to the way of using the buttons. So I'm gonna keep it at buttons for now. But if you end up having the buttons, you can also reverse the order of the back key or the recents button. So I can have the back right here, as you can see, or I can have it right here, as you can see. So make sure you configure this the way that you are, in fact, comfortable. Let's move on. Now, one more quick thing. When I tap on this button, the recents button, or bring up the recents menu, at the bottom here, you see a bunch of suggested applications and also your recently used windows. What you can do if you don't want these buttons at the bottom is you can tap this over here, Go into settings and you can disable the recommended applications okay now when i do this those applications at the bottom are gone so i'm getting a more immersive experience here this is the way i like it because usually i keep the mostly used applications right on my desktop but remember if you do enable them okay let me just enable that real quick if you do enable them these are populated automatically you cannot change these the phone picks them for you based on what it thinks you use most often all right now the next thing you want to do is you want to configure your home screen properly so first and foremost when you pinch the screen you can tap on the settings and that's going to give you all your home screen settings the first thing i like to do is i like to change the grid of the screen so right now it is at four by five but i'm going to do a five by five so it can actually fit more applications onto the screen. You can go for five by six, that gives you even more space by making everything smaller so it can fit more. Right now it is at four by five, which means I can put four applications in a row and five applications in a column, which essentially means that I can add up to 20 applications per screen at four by five, which means four times five equals 20. So that's 20 apps on the screen. But then you have all these various options to customize your home screen. I'm gonna keep it here for now. The other very important thing is this option here, swipe down for notification panel. So basically if I tap the home button, if I pull this down anywhere on the screen, it brings down the notifications panel as you can see. Now, if that option is disabled, what's gonna happen is it's gonna bring the app tray. But the problem is if you pull up, the app tray comes up anyway. So having it this way and this way is a little bit redundant. So what I like to do is I like to go back into my home screen settings, pinch settings and enable the swipe down for notifications panel. Once I have this enabled, now when I pull it down, it brings up my notifications panels and my quick toggles. And when I swipe up, gets me my apps, very useful. Now, one more thing, if I swipe over, you can see that we have the Google Home screen, which is actually brand new. So when I pinch the screen and swipe over, I can pick between Samsung Free or Google Discover. I highly recommend Google Discover. But if you want, you can also go for Samsung Free. That's just a different way of accessing things that matter to you most let me just click agree. So that's Samsung free. I got the TV over here. I'm able to read news if I want. And if I want to play games, I can go to the play section to play some games. Again, uh, like I said, if you swipe over, you do get access to this screen. So you can choose between Google or Samsung free, or if you don't care about any one of these, just disable it. Some people just don't want anything on their screen other than the applications. So now when I swipe over, nothing happens. Now, one more thing some people like is if you pinch the screen and if you go to the settings, uh, you can actually show an app button on the home screen. So if I enable this and if I go home, now I have a button I can tap that takes me to my app drawer. So you can either pull up or just tap the button to bring up all your applications. Just a quick tip right there. All right, so next thing has to do with multimedia. So you wanna make sure you get the best multimedia experience out of your phone. So you wanna go into your settings and then you wanna go back over to the advanced features and then go all the way down and go to video enhancer. You could click on it, make sure this is enabled. So basically, if you're watching movies or any kind of video, you are gonna get enhanced image quality for your videos. You are gonna enjoy a brighter display and more vivid colors, highly recommended. As you download more applications, they're gonna show up right here. So if you download Netflix, 
Hulu, Crunchyroll, whatever they're going to show up right here. You can individually enable or disable this for any application you want, but it's great when you're watching movies for crystal clear clarity. On top of that, you want to go back uh, to the main settings. You want to go into sounds and vibration. Then you want to go all the way down and you want to go to sound quality and effects. When you tap on this guy, you want to enable the Dolby Atmos sound, which is going to give you immersive sound experience. You can click this guy, pick auto or pick when it activates. So do you want this to activate for movies, music or just voice? I just keep it at auto so it picks it by itself. But with this one enabled and the video enhancer enabled, you are going to be good to go. And additionally, you can come to your equalizer. If you are listening to music, pick the right equalizer type for the kind of music that you're listening to. Look at the way it changes the equalizer, as you can see, or if you are an expert, you can make your own equalizer. Some people are very good with their audio, but for most people, you can pick the presets from here based on what you are listening to. I did forget to mention one thing. If you're back in the settings, sounds and vibration, uh, under sound quality and effects, you also want to make sure Dolby Atmos for gaming is enabled so you get the best sound when you are, in fact, gaming. Now let's move on and quickly talk about, about the S Pen functionality. So as you know, you can actually buy an S Pen for your phone, which is going to cost you $40. I'll drop a link down below if you want to buy this one. It is by Samsung. So the S Pen is going to have a little button here that you can press, uh, which is going to be able to bring up something known as the command center, which has a bunch of options such as being able to create a note. So if I tap on create a note, I can actually write stuff with natural handwriting. I can also go down here, pick up any kind of pencil that I want, a real pencil, a fountain pen, change the size of it, and I can write on the screen to take notes, uh, class notes, whatever, random notes, jot down random stuff. So you do get access to a bunch of options with the S Pen if you go and buy this. When you go to your settings, when you go to advanced features, it unlocks a menu known as the S Pen menu. If you enable it, it gives you all these additional functions that I'm going to be making a full video about. But in this video, I just want to quickly show you guys, you do have the S Pen option, and then you get all these additional functions on top of it. But the biggest thing with the S Pen, of course, is the fact that you can go to your Samsung Notes, Samsung Notes, right here, and you can start taking real handwritten notes with the phone. You can also use the, the S Pen to navigate the phone, no problem. This was previously only reserved uh, for Samsung Galaxy Note series. Now you can buy the S Pen and you can start doing the same stuff right here uh, as you can see. Tap on edit, tap on the pen, and I can start writing anything that I want. Now one more thing that's very important, and this has to do with your home screen, is if you press and hold on applications, you always get access to an expanded option for where you can do various things. So for example, if I press and hold on Play Store, I get different options. I can remove the application from the screen. If I press and hold this again, I can select a single application or I can select multiple applications. Then I can press and hold and I can move these around as a group, okay? That makes it much easier to move stuff around. So instead of having this one by one, if I grab this, put it here, that's one, then I would go back, grab it again. So instead of doing that, now what I can do is I can press and hold, click on select, select all the applications I wanna move at the same time, press and hold, and move them around as a group, as you can see. So that's an easy way to manage your home screen, to move stuff around rearrange your home screen or whatever you want to do, as you can see. Now, one more thing, if I tap on this and select a bunch of applications, on the top, I also have the option, which is hard to see right now, so let me make, make that clear for you. So I picked a different wallpaper, so again, let me do that. Select all these guys. You can see on the top, we have the option to manage all the selections at the same time using a batch process. So for example, if I wanna add two applications uh, into a folder, I simply select the applications that I want, okay, and I say create a folder, and all that goes into a folder, I can pick the folder name, let's just say mix, 
for now. And look at that. Now I have one folder with all those applications sitting at the bottom. So you can instantly create a folder from a bunch of apps just like this. All these options also work in the app tray. So again, if I press and hold, select, look at that. I can uninstall them or I can just create a folder by selecting all the applications I want. Now, one more thing that's fully customizable on these phones is the side key. So you have a volume rocker for volume, but you also have this key that when you press it one time, turns off the phone, okay? That's great. But what you wanna do is you wanna customize it so it behaves the way you want it to when you press and hold. So what you do is you go to the settings, okay? You go into advanced features, and then you go to side key. And basically, if you double press that key, you can quick launch the camera. So if I double press the side key, it launches the camera, or I can actually open an application. So if I click on here, it allows me to choose any application that I want. Let's just pick calculator for now. So now when I double press this button, it launches the calculator, okay? You can assign a quick button there. And also, let me just keep it a quick launch camera for the double press feature. But if you press and hold, do you want to wake up the Bixby or do you want to power off menu? So if I have this one and if I press and hold, I can access the power menu to turn off the phone. But remember, you also have the same option on the top here. That's the power menu. If you pull this down, we got the power menu. You can have the same thing here if you want. Okay. Or like I said, you can allow it to choose to wake Bixby instead. But remember, if you just click it once, it always turns off your phone, all right? Now, the next thing I wanna quickly talk about has to do with the camera. So let me launch the camera real quick, uh, especially if you have a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, there is a button you need to keep your eye on. So when you launch the camera, you're in the photo mode. On the top, there's a button right here. You click on it, it's going to expand and give you a bunch of options. Now, the one that's most important is this one that says three by four, let me tap it, 108 megapixels. So to utilize the 108 megapixel camera to take the sharpest possible image, you do wanna click the button and choose 108 megapixels. But when you don't wanna use 108 megapixels, which sometimes if you're just taking casual photos, you don't, you can go back to regular three by four or nine by 16, which is just an aspect ratio. But again, like I said, when you're ready to take that photo that you really wanna show your friends, you can take it in high detail, and when you do it 108 megapixels, it is gonna retain a lot of the actual detail from real life. So just remember that. All right, so let's quickly talk about the lock screen. So if I uh, go to the lock screen real quick, uh, there's an option here that you, you're not gonna see, but you can tap on the clock, which is gonna expand and give you access to five or six widgets that you can disable or enable as you please. I got the music player, I got the alarms, they're gonna, they're gonna show up right here. Or if I have any Bixby routine set up, they are gonna show up right here when I click on it. Now here's the good news, let me go into the phone. It's all customizable. So if I go to the settings, and if I go into my lock screen, uh, what I can do is I can swipe down and go into my widgets, lock screen widgets, and then I can enable the weather widget, the today's schedule widget, that's the calendar, the digital well-being or whatever, so I can disable the ones I don't want either. Now, I can also reorder them. Tap this, and I can move music to the second row, I mean second uh, slot. So look at this. So if I double tap to sleep the phone, double tap again. Now when I tap it, I got the weather, music, today's schedule, my appointments, and my next alarm. Okay, great little uh, trick for the lock screen that I'm loving. Also, in relation to that, if I lock the screen at the bottom, when I tap it, we have we get access to two little options at the bottom. This is the phone. This is the camera that I can access from the lock screen, okay? What you can also do is you can customize those two. Now you go to your settings, you go to lock screen under settings, and then you go for the shortcut. So you tap on it, and you can change the left shortcut to, let's say, the flashlight. Okay, and then you can change the right shortcut to, let's just say, uh, the calculator, or let's just say a calendar, okay? So now when I go back to the lock screen, I got the calendar and the flashlight. That's gonna turn on the flashlight just like that. So it's on right now, as you can see in the back. 
because we have a shortcut right here. Or I can access the calendar, but for that I do have to lock the screen, then it gets dumped straight into my calendar application. And like I said, you can modify them right here under shortcut, which is absolutely great. Now, one more thing I like to do on my home screen, I'm, I'm sorry, my lock screen is put something here, contact information. Let's just say Saki Tech so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, now when I turn off the screen, double tap, I can have a little signature here that says Saki Tech. You can put your name, you can put a quote, whatever you want, another way to customize your phone and make it yours, something you cannot do on the iPhones. Now the final thing I wanna talk about in relation to the lock screen is if I go over here, you can actually customize the clock over here. So if I go inside, if I go to my settings, if I go to my lock screen right over here, I can tap on the clock style and once I do, I can access the lock screen clock style. So I can do it like this, I can do it like this, like that, like that. You can see I have all these options. And the best part is I have the ability to change the color to whatever I want. So if I want a red clock, I can have that. I click done. Now when I go back out to the lock screen, I got the red clock and date and the signature at the bottom. Okay. And one more thing, if I lock the screen and if I tap it only once instead of double tapping, I get access to the always on display. And this is also fully customizable. So I go to the settings. I go to the lock screen, I go to always on display, and right now I have the tap to show option, okay? So basically tap to show means you tap once and it shows the always on display for 10 seconds, all right? But I can also change it to show always, that's gonna eat more battery life, but the best part is I can tap on clock style and change the way the clock looks here. So look at all these different options I have. I can go to this one, I can have uh, this one right here. I can tap here. I can add a GIF image as you can see. Okay, so I can even have this guy right here. And then I can click on done. And now if I keep it as show always, if I double tap the locks of the screen, it's just gonna appear by itself. And you can see it's got that GIF. And of course, it's always on. Battery, notifications, time, and the fingerprint sensor right here. So you get some information with the always on display. The best part is, it is fully customizable. Some people don't even want it, just disable it. That's gonna save you battery. Or keep it at tap to show if you just have to have it, but only tap to access it, okay? I'm gonna disable it for this video because I actually never use it, but, but the option is in fact there. Now when it comes to the fingerprints, if you go into your settings, and if I go to biometrics and security, you wanna go to your fingerprints, and let me just put in my pin number here, uh, right now, I only have registered one fingerprint, which is this one. You can always add more if you want. You tap on add. You can add as many as you want. Uh, but let's say after you add, you come here and you're looking at fingerprint one. What you can do is you'll forget what that is most likely. So you would want to tap on check added fingerprints. Then you put a finger on it. So if I put this one, it says no match. But if I put this one, it says that's the fingerprint one. So once I do that, I can click on this and just change it to, uh, for example, left index. So I know what fingerprint that in fact is. So just something to be aware of over here, you also have the show animation when unlocking. So for example, look at this. There was no animation. Now when I do this one, let me go back in here to my fingerprints. I can enable the animation. Now when I lock it, notice how there's gonna be a little animation as I log in, giving you a little bit more immersive effect. There's a couple other things here you wanna look at, and especially this thing right here, you wanna always have this enabled, so when you go into the uh, home screen, and when you wake up the lock screen, you also always have a little icon here so you know where to put your finger. So that has to do with the fingerprint sensor. Now you also wanna set up your notifications. So let me go to my notifications here. Let's say you do get a notification. This phone has some edge screen properties. So when you do go to notifications, you're gonna see that you are sitting at the brief notification. So you get a little pop-up every time somebody sends you a message or whatever. You wanna tap on brief pop-up settings and then go to edge lighting style. You tap on this one and you can access your edge screen options. So when you get a notification, 
you get these nice effects around the edges. So look, you can pick the color if you want. And additionally, you can also change the size and the transparency. I can change it to thick, change the duration to long, okay? And then effect is separate, so I can have this effect. Look at that glitter effect. I can have the heart effect. I'll see a bunch of hearts on the top. I can do the fireworks, so you're going to see some fireworks. Also, you get that red bar, and you if you swipe over, you have the spotlight. That's one of my favorites, actually. That's a spotlight effect, okay? But if you want the actual glow around the edges, you want to pick one of these guys that has that icon, that shape there. So it gives you an edge lighting effect. So that's only going to be available under the brief pop-up settings. If you go to detail pop-up, it's going to disappear under brief it's actually going to show up right here but that's how you get that beautiful uh, edge lighting effect if you want to customize your phone uh, even further now on top of that we also have the edge panels so edge panels are going to be under display if i go down it's going to be right here the edge panels the big thing here is the handle so if i tap on the handle i can change the color of the handle and change the position of the handle so let's uh it's right now it's right here so look at that I can make it bigger I can make it even more bolder and then that's panel I can pull this in and that's going to give me access to a bunch of edge screen panels I can tap on the settings which takes me to the panel settings from here I can enable even more things smart select the weather tools reminders whatever so now when I go back I have access to all this stuff right here now remember initially you want to go to the settings display scroll down go to edge panels make sure it's enabled if you disable this that disappears enable it it shows up right there tap it again and from here you can go to handle to change the handle settings move it up and down change the color okay then go back and then go to panels to add extra panels from here just tap here to choose them you can also download more panels if you tap on the Galaxy Store. It'll take you to the store and you can download even more panels from here as many as you want. But the big thing is if I go back here, I can customize all these panels. And then I have a bunch of useful settings right here. I can have the uh, the, uh, the weather, uh, the, the compass, tally counter, flashlight, a level, a ruler, Whatever you want, it's all here. Tons of customization available on this phone. Now, one thing I'm going to show you guys in relation to messages is if I go to my messages right here, here's a message that hasn't been sent yet, but I can customize the way this looks as well. So what you want to do is you want to go into the message. Let's say you have a conversation with this guy. I'm having a conversation with my second number. So I go inside, you tap on this button. You can say customize the chat room. Once you click on that, you can change the background of the chat room. As you can see, you can also go to your gallery and pick an existing photo in your gallery to set that up as a background image. You can change the text contrast from here. You can change the bubble opacity. As you can see, all the changes are reflected on the top. But if I go back out now, for that particular conversation, I have a different chat background. So if you are a text messenger, you can do this for any conversation you're having with anybody. Now, one way to keep your phone at maximum performance is to go to your settings every now and then and then scroll down to where it says battery and device care. Tap on this guy and you do want to tap on the optimize now button. That's going to optimize your phone and it's going to make it run much smoother. Now, one thing I like to do is the same option that's here. You can have a specialized button on the desktop. When you click the button, it does what I just did in the device care. So you pinch the screen, you go to your widgets, you go to device care, which is right here, you tap on it, and then you pick the one that you want. You can have a small one or a large one. I like this one right here. So you grab this, you put it anywhere you want on the screen. Now look at that. If I tap this button, every time I tap it, it optimizes the phone. Your phone has been optimized. So just keep this anywhere that you want. Now, again, if I go to the settings, if I go to device care, it's the same thing I did right here. So again, just have that widget on your desktop at all times. Every now and then, maybe after three hours, four hours, after you play a game or watch a movie, tap this so it just clears up the phone from the inside 
and optimizes for perfect performance, okay, for optimum performance. All right, so those were a bunch of tips and tricks to get you guys started with your phone. Very expensive phone, but highly customizable. Lots and lots of stuff to do. So tweak your phone, make it yours, and also stay tuned to Saki Tech for even more videos to come because trust me, there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. So subscribe and I will see you in the next video. For now, have a fantastic day, all right?